Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how we can transition to walking or running animation states inside of Unity. So this is going to require adding some extra states to a animator controller, and we have to create the animation clips for the character. So this will be based off of an existing sprite sheet. So let's get out of play mode, go ahead and open up the prefab for the character you want to work on. And then once you've done that, you can open up the animation window. If your character already has an animator controller attached to it, then you should be able to see the different clips for that specific animator controller. So if you don't have the animation window open yet, you can go to window and then go down to animation, animation, and that'll pop up this window and you can have it wherever you want. So we need to create animation clips for the walk cycle animations. So I'm going to click on this drop down and then choose create new clip. And I'm going to call it player walk right. And I'm going to save this inside of the folder where I have my prefab stored. And inside of that is another folder called animation. So this is where I'm storing all my animation clips. I'll go ahead and save here. And we can see that pops up inside of here. <clears throat> and now we can add the properties that we want to change or animate to this animation clip. So what we're changing is going to be the sprite on our character. So I need to open up my art in the project. So in this case, it's in this character's folder. And we can see I have this sprite sheet, which is already cut into many different frames. So I just need to select and drag in the ones that are related to the walk cycle. So if I zoom in a little bit on uh, this project window, it'll become more clear which ones are meant for that. So looking at this, it seems to start here and ends here. So I'm going to grab these frames for my walk to the right animation and just drag them and drop them into the animation window. So now we should have all the frames inside of here. And if we go to the inspector and make sure this animator is checked active, we can go back to the animation window and hit play. And we can also uh, zoom in on this timeline a little bit and just make sure these frames are correct. So a walk cycle should basically start and end at the same frame and then everything in between is just the walking. So we need to do this three more times for a walk up, walk left and walk down uh, for a top down style game. So let's create those other clips. I will create player walk up next, which is going to store in the same directory. So we just grab the next six frames here and I'm going to bring them in. OK, and we do the same thing for walk left now. So player walk left and let's grab the next six frames. And that could be uh, any number of frames, by the way, not all of walk cycles are going to have six frames. So it depends on your character. And let's create the player walk down. So player walk down and then we grab our frames and we position them inside of here. So we have our animation clips set up. So now we should open up the animator window and inside of here we can see in the last video I set up the idle animation state which includes a blend tree i'll just double click into that and you can see that there's four options here idle right idle up idle left and idle down and those are based on the y and x inputs so if the character is trying to walk left we're going to show player idle left basically so if we click on the blend tree you can kind of see what that is set up like and in order to create the walk blend tree over here. I just duplicated this and renamed it. So now we just got to double click on this blend tree for the motion over here. And we need to put in motions. You can see that the points are already set up. We're still using the X input and Y input parameters to determine which direction it's going to show. And these are the values for where our motion should be positioned inside of this blend tree. So position one X is talking about over here, which is to the right. So we need the right animation. So let's just go ahead and grab that. I will make it a list view so that we can clearly see the name. So we want player walk right. And then this should be player walk up. So I'll select that and then player walk left and player walk down. So as our values change with the X and Y input, uh, it's going to select which animation it's going to play based on where our current position is closest to the animation. This should definitely be saying X input. So let's let's make sure that that's actually accurate. X input and Y input. So I will open up the player controller script and uh, we can see how those Y and X parameters in the animator are set real quick uh, before we make it so that we can actually transition between walking and running. So inside of the player controller script, whenever we're trying to move, we get the direction 
that we're trying to move. And this is using the input system that is available in the Unity Package Manager, by the way, the new input system. Um, so this will give us our X and Y values. And then I'm just taking these values and I'm setting them as the X input and Y input parameters on the animator. So to set those values, of course, up here at the top, you got to get reference to that animator first. But other than that, pretty straightforward. So now we need to set up a way of transitioning between idle and walk. And the condition for that should, of course, be if we are moving or if we are not moving. So first, let's switch back to the animator. And we need to set up a transition between idle and walk so that in script, we can actually transition between these. So let's get rid of these individual motions down here. We don't need them here because they're already contained in the walk blend tree. And now let's right click on idle and make a transition to walk and right click on walk and make a transition to idle. For these transitions, we need a way to be able to determine if it should be going from idle to walk or walk to idle. And a great way to do that is to use this conditions category down here. So we can add a Boolean parameter and I'll call it is walking. And when that's true, we should switch to walk. And if it's not true, we should switch to idle. So I'm going to hit plus here. And well, you, we can see we don't have a Boolean parameter yet. So we need to add it over here in the animator window. Going to click plus and choose Boolean is walking. Okay, so now we can change the condition from X import to is walking. So is walking is true, then we should be walking as the animation. And then for the going back transition, walk to idle, we should click plus here. And then on the drop down, choose is walking and make this false. So when the character is not walking, then it's going to play the idle. And when the character is walking, we're going to switch to the walk animations. So now we just need to set this animation parameter in our code wherever we want to. So let's open up our code. And here we can see with the way I structured this move player function is that it will return a Boolean whether or not it was able to move. So with every fixed update, we're going to try to move our player. And if it was successful, then we can say that the player was moving and we should set the is moving uh, parameter to true. Uh, one thing we could do here so that we don't actually need to waste any effort on this code when the import isn't pressed down here is set to only run this move player code if this move input is not actually vector zero. So move input does not equal vector two dot zero. And if that's the case, then we're going to run this code. Because what's the point of doing a bunch of recasts and checking if you're able to move if when you do move, it's not going to be going anywhere anyway. So this just means we need to run this code less. So the way this code is set up is that first it's going to try to move the player in the direction that uh, the player actually input. So that's going to be X and Y direction. And if that fails, it'll try to slide around the X axis. And if it can't slide on X, it'll try to slide on Y. And if all three of those fail, then it's just not going to move the player at all. So we can set the animator Boolean parameter with animator dot set bool here. And that's going to be is moving. And we can just set that to the return value from the move player. So we have our bool success. If it was successful in moving, then we're going to set is moving to that value. And if it was unsuccessful, then it's going to set is moving to false. So the other case, of course, is going to be if there was no movement at all. So we can do else animator dot set bool here. Is moving is just straight up false. Uh, since if there's no input, the player isn't moving, at least as the controller is written right now. So we just set that to false. So in your own code, your movement might be a little different. You just need to find a place where you set your is moving variable to true or false, depending on whether you want it to be playing your idle animation or your walk animation. So now that we have that set up, we should be able to have these transitions occur. So let's go ahead and hit play, enter the game and see if it is working at all right now. So I'm going to press right to move to the right and left to move to the left, up to move up and down to move down. And it does not seem to be working yet. OK, and the reason for that is uh, the parameter is moving does not exist. So let's change that parameter is walking to is moving. So you got to make sure that your string names are actually the same or you can run into problems. So let's hit play now. Going to walk to the right, walk to the left, walk up and walk down. So it is kind of working. But the problem is it's playing the animations way too frequently. 
so let's start by fixing the easy thing, which is that when we move to one animation to another, there seems to be a bit of a lag. So if you click on these transitions and you expand the settings, you can see that there's a transition duration set. We want this to be set to zero because our transitions need to be instant. So let's do that for both of these. Now, if we hit play and we start moving around, you can see that fixes the animation. It occurs immediately. Okay, the other thing, if we open up our animation window, click on the player prefab, we need to take the frames for player walk right, player walk up, down, and left, and make it so that they occur uh, less frequently. So if we click over here on the right, there's an option here, show sample rate. So this will be the number of times per second that it will go through these frames. So basically, you could think of it as frames per second. I am going to set this to, let's say, 10. And now if we hit play and walk to the right, we can see the animation looks a lot more normal because now there's less frame changes per second. So you can change the sample rate for all of them. Another option would be that you can spread out your uh, frames. So if we click on walk up here, we can just separate them. By... So I could take these frames and move them over to the right. And down here at the bottom, we can expand the timeline if we need to and just separate them all further out like this. And then by increasing the number of space between them by five times, you're going to make it appear five times slower. However, I think that is a little bit more work. So I am just going to change the sample rate on all of them to 10. And let's go to player left and 10, and then player down 10. It's just probably the easiest way to do it. So now let's hit play and we can walk in all four directions. We can see the walk animation looks a lot more normal here now. So now we can hit play and walk around in all four directions. The movement should look a lot more close to what we would expect now. If you need to increase or decrease the number of frames per second, you can just change the sample. Uh, another option you can do is instead of changing the speed here, you can click on those animation states in the animator window, go to inspector, and you can increase or decrease the speed here. So if you need it to play at double speed, you would just take the speed and set it to double. So that's not gonna be changing the speed of the original animation. It's gonna be changing how fast it plays on this character. So generally that would end up being the same thing, but if you use the same animation clip across multiple animated controllers, then there could be a difference there. So it might just be better to change it straight in the animation window, unless you have a need for it to play at double speed, maybe using the same animation frames and then doing a player run state. So basically that is in a nutshell, how you can set up your switches on your animator controller to go from idle states to walk states. The principles are very similar. If you are going to be adding things like attacking, you just need to check with a boolean is it in the attacking state in the script and set that animation perimeter and then you'd be able to switch to those animations and you just got to set up your logic within your animator controller so hopefully this gives all of you a pretty good rundown of the basics of doing animation for your 2d characters inside of unity i've been chris thank you for watching and i will see all of you in my future unity content